Howdy. Season of the Lost, aka Season 15, is here in Destiny 2. Bungie kind of threw a ton of new things our way, and I'm here to help you figure it all out in an easy to understand manner. But before we get going, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Ridge Wallets. These things are beautiful, and I'm glad to promote them on my channel because I've actually been using one myself for about the past year. No joke, this right here has been my actual wallet. A lot of guys I know are still lugging around wallets like this. Big, bulky, floppy, and uncomfortable, doesn't sit well in your pocket, and you gotta move it around when you sit down. As I mentioned over a year of the Ridge Wallet, and I'm just never going back. It's light, sleek, and efficient. It doesn't fold or bulge out awkwardly in your pocket. It's got room for all my cards and a clip for bills when I am carrying cash. They've got over 30 colors and styles on their website, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. Sounds like a Destiny shader. They've got 30,000 five-star reviews. One of them being mine, and each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. Yes, you can buy just one wallet and boom, carry and use it for life. The Ridge is so confident you'll like it that they'll let you test drive it for 45 days, and if you don't, you can send it back for a full refund. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash falloutplays and use promo code falloutplays. Link to their site in the video description and thank you again to Ridge for sponsoring today's video. All right, enough selling out. Let's get on with the content. Kicking things off, there's a new area at the helm. You can either jump through the teleporter to talk to Marasov, but you'll probably be spending a lot of time right here at the Wayfinder's Compass Station. If you've played season Season 14, you probably know what to expect here. You got bounties available for pickup. Each will grant you XP, and by completing eight bounties on your character, you will get powerful gear to drop. Also at the Wayfinder's Compass, we've got some new Elemental Well mods. Normally, I would laugh at these until I'm blue in the face, but Warmind Cells have gotten nerfed in Season 15, and it's looking like Bungie's really trying to make a push towards making Elemental Wells not suck, so I would advise picking these up if you can. Keep in mind, they're going to require Wayfinder Compass Calibration, though. What is that, you wonder? Good question, you mischievous little scamp. That's just a fancy phrase for leveling up your Wayfinder's compass rank. Hover over the icon in the top left, and you will see that in order to rank up, you need to complete seasonal challenges. Joy! Head on over to your seasonal challenge page, and you will notice that by hovering over not all, but a few of the challenges, one of your rewards will be Wayfinder's compass calibration level. Right now, in week one, we've got three of these. Wayfinder's Voyage 1, Ascendant Ballast 1, and Leyline line rumors. Each will reward Wayfinder's compass calibration level. Back to the Wayfinder's compass. If you open the thing up, you will find a very familiar sight. You got three rows here, and we are going to slowly be grinding out content until we upgrade everything here. You will notice that a lot of the upgrades here require parallax trajectory. That would be a new currency in season 15. You earn them from completing in-game activities, things like completing strikes, PvP, and so forth. If you're looking for a really quick way to farm them at the moment, you could try doing heroic public events, which by now we pretty much all know like the back of our hand. At the moment, doing one heroic event will give you 88 trajectory. There might be more efficient farming methods in the future, but for right now, this is easy bake oven. You can also get trajectory by finding ascendant anchors, which you can find inside quests or activities. They're not too hard to find, little streamlined beans of purple light going up into the sky. You'll find a few of them in the Shattered Realm, which is probably the next thing I should talk about. Shattered Realm is the new weekly mission. The the goal is to go through in search of Marasov's lost homies who we gotta rescue. While in the Shattered Realm, you are going to be aligning beacons, aka finding giant purple easter eggs, which glow with beams of light that go way into the sky, activating them, then playing defend the objective by killing a buttload of Taken who will then pop into the area. Your only real challenge involved with Shattered Realm is that it's kinda big, but you can find your way around by looking for the beacons, which aren't hard to find because again, they beam light way up into the sky. If you're looking for a weapon to use in Shattered Realm, might I recommend Trinity Ghoul, which is dummy easy at both range and crowd control, not to mention it can stun overload champions with the overload bow mod. By the way, while in the Shattered Realm, be sure to keep your eyes peeled for these, a barrier breach activation point. By activating them, you'll be able to pass through gigantic purple barriers you otherwise would not be able to. Why is that important? Well, by going through those barriers, you'll be able to access hidden areas that contain chests that, when opened, help you complete a key seasonal challenge. Remember from earlier, the Leyline Rumors Season Challenge wants you to find three, quote, trivial mysteries in the Shattered Realm. The chests that you open in those barrier areas will count as one completed 
trivial mystery. So yeah, make sure you do that because again, completing that challenge will give you Wayfinder's compass calibration level, which you need to level the damn thing up. Now let's talk about the six player match made activity called Astral Alignment. You load it via the Dreaming City directory and it takes you into what looks like Blind Well. Here's how that activity goes. First, you're gonna activate the well and kill trash until you're teleported to a different area in the Dreaming City. First, you need to collapse Taken Rips. A bunch of Taken will pop into the area, including Taken Majors. Destroy them, pick up their essence, i.e. their Taken Orb, bring it over to a nearby plate, and you will auto-dunk it right in. Keep doing that until you've dunked on every plate. Champions will appear, but no big deal. When you've finished with that part, you'll be pushed into a new activity. It'll either be Ether Harvest or Install the Batteries. In Ether Harvest, several dead servitors will need to be defended. While killing trash enemies, look around for big purple orbs. Shoot and break them before too many of them make their way into the dead servitor you're trying to defend, and you will be a-okay. Take note, there is a potential glitch with the Ether Harvest segment where enemies can despawn, and you literally need to leave the encounter. Bungie's aware of the issue, and apparently they are working on it. In Install the Batteries, which hopefully you get instead of Ether Harvest, it's kind of like the Wrath of Machine raid encounter, where you need to repair the giant Zamboni. Paracausal batteries will drop in, and you're going to need to carry them over to a drop-off area, then dunk them in. If you carry a battery for too long, your guardian will become exhausted, so make sure you don't end up dropping the ball. <laughs> Oh god, I'm dead inside. When either Ether Harvest or Install the Batteries is done, you will get teleported back to the Blind Well area to fight a big bad boss. Look for Taken Blights to appear on the map. Go inside them and destroy them, and when you do, a yellow bar health Taken will appear. Kill that Taken, grab their essence, i.e. their orb, and with that orb, you can now de-shield the big bad boss, who otherwise is immune to all forms of damage. When de-shielded, you and your team can mash his face into the carpet and activity over. Over. At the end, you'll get a free loot chest as well as another loot chest that you can open in exchange for Parallax Trajectory. Here's some other helpful Season 15 info that I want to mention but don't feel like it needs its own video. The Ritual Weapon is a rocket launcher with what I think is a really good role. You can get it by grinding out either Strikes, PvP, or Gambit until you're able to rank up enough to hit level 16 in any, not all, but any of those one activities. The Wayfinder's Voyage Quest is really big and apparently will go all the way through Season 15, but you can't do it all once because it's time gated. Make sure you keep up with it every week and it shouldn't be a problem. The old Trials of the Nine weapons are being re-released into D2 via the Prophecy Dungeon, so if you're at all interested in getting any of those weapons, and I am, go grab a fire team and fire up that dungeon. We got three new pieces of exotic armor available in Season 15, all of which have been brought forward from D1. Radiant Dance Machines for the Hunter, which by the way have gotten a rework, the No Backup Plans for the Titan, and the Nothing Manacles for the Warlock. I'll be updating my Lost Sector calendar once again, probably when I'm back from my vacation to Alaska, which reminder happens on Thursday the 26th. I know, really good timing. By the way, if you remember my video on how to trick Lost Sector drops, apparently that trick still works in Season 15, and it can probably help you get that new exotic armor way easier, so probably go check out that video, link down low in the video description. There's a new exotic linear fusion rifle that you can get right away if you have the Season Pass, and it is really good. I've got a brand new video showing my findings on that gun if you want to check it out, link also down low in the video description. Final thing for now, if you're a fan of the Traveler's chosen sidearm. I finished one game of PvP, I think, and immediately got the exotic catalyst to drop. Apparently, it gives both osmosis and full auto to the gun, so if you're into that, go grind it out. That's it for right now. Wanted to give you some basic info on what's going on in Season 15. There's a handful of new weapons and new weapon perks, and I plan on doing a deep dive on them when I'm back from Alaska on September 5th. Even though I'll be gone, I got D2 content that will be uploaded to the channel in my absence, so stay tuned for that. Do the like thing, do the sub thing, and as always, much love to my Patreons. I appreciate all of you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.